So we're running out of market data people. This is a topic that keeps coming up time and time again, certainly at every conference that I've been to. It's coming up in the workplace and it's coming up in the press. Here's an article from last year's Waters Technology Magazine. It's getting harder and harder to fill market data roles. It certainly does feel like we're running out of market data people. But I think it's time that we stop pondering this and started to ask ourselves, what can we do about it? How can we cultivate the next generation of market data professionals? I'm Nadine Scott, and for the past 22 years, I've been working the full gamut of market data roles, starting with invoice processing, through inventory management, business analyst, vendor manager, all the way up to global head of market data at UBS. And in February this year, I joined TRG Screen as the head of managed service. And one of the reasons for that is because I'm really excited at the role that managed service can play in resolving this problem. And in preparation for this speech, I've been reflecting on how I acquired my knowledge. What was my learning path? What was the process of becoming a market data professional? Now, if we consider the job roles themselves, we hear the words administrator, business analyst, vendor manager, and it all seems quite straightforward. But you know, and probably most of the people in this room know, that these are not straightforward roles. So what makes market data so complex, and why is it such a complex learning path? So the first thing is the business context. So any market data team that I've worked for has been so intertwined with the business. It really does feel like we're living with the business day to day. And that, as we know, is a very dynamic working environment and very pressurized. Then there's the accuracy in execution. So we need to know about entitlements, about entitlement systems. We need to know what we're doing because one false move could mean the difference between the business making a loss or the business making a gain, winning the client pitch or losing out to a rival. Timely access to market data is everything, and the market data team is pivotal to that. And let's face it, market data is expensive. I couldn't quite believe it when I, when I wrote this number on the slide but $37.3 billion was spent in, on market data last year, according to Burton and Taylor. It's an expensive business. And I wonder how much of that number is down to unnecessary costs that the business simply don't need to spend. It's just that we don't have enough people to monitor consumption. So the business context is demanding, accuracy is key, and if not managed properly, it can result in unnecessary cost. But there's other factors that drive complexity, this, this nicheness, this specialism th that we work in. First of all, the systems that we need to work with. Very specialized, very specific systems, inventory systems like the one that TRG screen <laughs> um, sell. There's entitlement systems, order management systems, procurement systems, and increasingly third-party risk management systems. This is where knowledge, very specific knowledge needs to develop. And then there's the sheer reach of market data. So it's never constrained to one area of the business. It's absolutely everywhere. So if you work for a large financial organization, it's used in the buy side, it's used in the sell side, asset management, research, global markets, middle office, back office, even group functions like finance and risk. That's a lot of use cases to get our heads around. And lastly, it's a very high visible cost. It's always attracting 
the attention of senior management. Sometimes it's the second or third expense to a firm. That attracts a lot of attention. Market data teams are under constant pressure to articulate cost drivers, to provide a narrative as to why this cost is so high, to reduce consumption, save costs, save vendors. There's a lot going on. As we know, it's a very rewarding career, but it's complex. That's the role. So it led me to think, OK, how did I learn this role? And from that, could we understand how we teach this role? So let me introduce you to Dr. Satish Kumar. Now, he's not a market data person or <laughs> a teacher. Um, he's actually an ecologist. And in researching this presentation, I stumbled upon one of his lectures where he talked about education and the concept of education as being a process of pulling out somebody's potential. And I thought this was really interesting because I think of education almost like a transfer, a transfer of knowledge from one person, a teacher, to another person, a learner. And we've all experienced that in, in classroom settings, in lectures. There's always been somebody, the teacher, transferring knowledge to others. So I really like this concept of Dr. Sachis Kumar, where it's actually a, a process of, of, of pulling out the potential. Now, back in the 90s, I studied German. I'm not going to start speaking German, do not worry. But I was told to get this book. Hammer's German Grammar and Usage. And I was very young and very naive. And I naively thought that if I could transfer what is in this book, I'd magically be able to speak German. <laughs> but as we know, it, it, is, it doesn't work like that. Otherwise, I would be proudly giving this speech in German today. The word education comes from the Latin word educare which means to pull out the potential, pull out what is within. It's the same in German, erziehen, to pull. But it's not enough. That transfer of knowledge is simply not enough. And Dr. Satish Kumar talks about an analogy of a seed. Now, a seed is tiny and, and it's empty if you cut it in half. But it's the potential that's within that seed. The seed becomes a sapling, it becomes a tree. As long as the conditions around it are right, the soil, the weather, etc., the support system around it. So the knowledge alone is not enough. There needs to be a context. So we're on our learning path. If knowledge is not enough, then how do we provide the learning context? This is the Hiccup Bar in Dortmund, in Germany. When I was a student, <laughs> I spent a lot of time in here. It's true, I did. <laughs> and I often joke, <laughs> I often joke that I learned more about speaking German in here than I did from this book. And why? It's because it's a real life context. I'm interacting with German speakers. I don't take out my book before I speak to somebody and refer to it. I get straight in there, straight into the practice. And yes, I make mistakes, but that is part of the learning process. That is part of confidence building. And in financial organizations, we have an amazing context because it's very uh, diverse. There's lots of learning opportunities, but it's giving access to those, to, those, to those learning contexts, to our early career talent.
And it's only in those learning contexts that we can apply that knowledge. It's only in those learning contexts that we start to develop confidence and mastery in what we do. So in financial organisations, yes, we have the knowledge, we have knowledgeable people, we also have the context in which to learn. So why are we still having a problem bringing in new talent, early career talent? Well, going back to our support system, the support system of the seed, if we think of the environment as the seed's context, there's also something else that's at play. There needs to be a gardener or some kind of expert, some kind of expert farmer bringing out the potential of that seed. And in professional life, to bring out potential in others, that takes time and it takes energy. And here's the problem. If you've been working in the market data teams for the last two decades, you'll know that the demands on us have been relentless. Here's some of the events that have taken place during my career. They've certainly kept me busy. Some are vendor-driven, some are regulatory-driven. Some are driven by the economic context of our times. This is by no means an, exhausting list, an exhaustive list. Quite honestly, this has kept me busy and it's kept my teams busy over the years. There's been very little time to bring in early career talent. In fact, there's been a tendency to hire experienced people. And that's backed up again by the Waters article. This is a recruitment expert. The client has been looking for quick fixes. The client has been looking for experienced people. And that's the problem. We've been hiring from the same talent pool over and over again. And that talent pool is now run out. So what can we do? What can we do to replenish this talent pool into our industry? So again, it's why I joined TRG Screen, because I think one of the answers is managed service. Yes, you would use the managed service to outsource certain activities, certain tasks. But what about outsourcing the recruitment, the identification, the development of the next generation of market data professionals? What if we as a managed service could produce that? That would be a utility for the industry to tap into, not just for systems and expertise, but also for the next generation of talent that we're all finding so difficult to find. But if we're serious about that, if we're serious about cultivating the next generation of market data professionals, if we're serious about pulling out the potential in others, then we need something else, not just knowledge and context, we need culture, and specifically a learning culture. So in 2001, I started my career actually at a market data vendor. I won't say which one, but here's a clue. And I was a seed. Remember Dr. Kumar's seed? I was a seed, completely fresh out of college. And I started that day with 40 other seeds. And the week after that, there was 100 seeds. This vendor must have thought they're going to be really successful one day, so let's hire all these people. And looking back, it was a true learning culture. The whole atmosphere when you walk in, it's a very buzzy atmosphere. All the colleagues from all over the world, you've got free food, You've got fish tanks. And the focus is on pulling out the potential of those seeds, of those new, new recruits, of those early career people. I was there for four years, and in all that time, the training and development was relentless. There was workshops, lectures. We had to do stints on the help desk. 
We went out with field service. We went out with sales. We met clients. The whole social aspect of work was built around the company as well. There were networking events and hot tickets, communal areas. It's only now that I look back that I appreciate I was fully immersed in a learning culture. Now contrast that with my first job in market data at a tier one investment bank. First day, got shown my desk, introduced to my colleagues, shown the systems that I'd worked with, and that really was it. It was really left to myself. That was it. People just simply didn't have the time. They'd hired me to solve a problem, and it was straight into the practical side. So in bringing all this together, this is where I think that a managed service can really step up to this responsibility. The responsibility of cultivating the next generation of market data professionals. A generation of professionals that are proficient in the systems, that know their context, and that are fully immersed in a learning culture. So yes, market data teams may be running out. We may be running out of market data people. But I think that it's up to us to step up to that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Nina. So I'm um, actually the head of HR of Financial.com, so this topic was specifically interesting for me. So if you have any more questions, um, I'd be very happy to come with the microphone and you can pose your questions, especially for the recording, and ask Nina if there's more, more information that you would like to get. Hi, I'm Luigi, um, and actually, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, and I agree with everything you said, but I, I also like the picture of the gardener. Um, and you said he has complex knowledge, and he's the one who's actually nurturing, the one who has to be educated. But I'm missing a tiny but crucial thing. What about the capabilities of the gardener, especially regarding structure of his knowledge? Which experience have you made? Um, which capabilities and skills are crucial from the point of view of the gardener in order to nurture and educate everybody who's, who's really important in that, in that field? Yeah, thank you, Luigi. Good question. So I think working in market data environments, I think it is such a specific knowledge set that the, the gardener also almost has to be somebody from the industry. That has to be people that have lived it, breathed it, understand the context. It's such an important context to get right. So I do think that I, I do place those gardeners as market data professionals, experienced ones. Um, the point that I'm making is it's really difficult if you have got that knowledge. The business are relying on you so much that it's really difficult for you to find the time to, to, to do that nurturing. Hence why um, I think that outsourcing could be uh, the the answer to that. So you would be the gardeners? Correct. One more question. Yeah. Um, uh, which experience have you made regarding, I, I mean, the real skills of the gardeners you have seen? Like, uh, the gardener takes care of his garden, but do, ha have you ever experienced gardeners who really know, oh, we have paths and we have different plans, and I'm really able to pitch and tell you everything regarding the structure of my garden, mm. or is it just like the gardener knows, or oh, I have a brilliant garden, and I can tell you like two or three hours everything about my garden, but like structureless. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Wh which experience did, did, did you make? So my, my experience is that the industry has been pretty unstructured. It's almost like a barrage of events that come onto us and that we have to simply respond. So actually, I... I when we talk about a, a structured program or, or training plan, I, 
I think it might be pretty fruitless. <laughs> um, it, it's all about um, teaching resilience, um, the context that you're, that you're working in, giving the requisite knowledge that's needed, but because it's such an evolving industry, that knowledge is changing over time anyway. So it's the, the, the job of the gardener, the person, the, the, the trainer, really needs to be to teach those skills and aptitudes, and that is less structured. I, I agree with you. Any more questions? Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Vlad and Gaj from Swiss Re. Um, I was just thinking, um, so there is pot uh, potentially a fear on the market as well. So if you cultivate people, especially in a scarce environment, you might lose them very soon as well mm. because the market is very competitive. Yeah. Uh, people are being offered high rates, you know, just to go somewhere else where and being already trained. Um, on the other hand, I think the alternative is not better, so not training people doesn't uh, help us either. So it mm. needs uh, basically the industry to move in that direction as a whole, mm. to say, yes, we have a scarcity, uh, we, need, uh, we have a demand for people, and we need to cultivate that kind of, uh, of knowledge and, uh, and, uh, and experience. Mm. Yeah. More of a comment, sorry. Yeah, no, I, I, com I completely agree, and I think certainly some of the firms that I've worked for outsourcing um, or offshoring was the answer before, but now what we're finding is that all that investment that we did in, the, in offshoring in the first place and the investment that we made in people, in training people, and those markets are now becoming, those low-cost locations are becoming very dynamic, um, and it's, what's the plan B? Um, this, is, this, this is definitely um, something that I've observed as well. Yeah, very interesting. More comments? So not just questions, but comments you would like to add to the discussion? Yes. <coughs> Thanks so much for the interesting presentation. Uh, you reflected on your kind of past 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, going forward, like how do you think next decade might be different from past 20 years? That's a really good question. This actually keeps me awake at night. Um, so I'm looking forward to Steve's presentation about AI after this one. Um, this is something that I think we all have to get our heads around. You know, what is, um, what are all our jobs gonna, going to look like in the, in the next decade? Um, what I will say is that in market data, my rich experience has taught me that it's a relationship business. I mean, look at us, we're all here in person at a conference interacting and networking. And this is the really the, um, you know, one of the great things about working in this industry. Um, so I, I can't fully see that aspect of it going away, but I think in the next decade with, um, you know, newer technologies, I think it will look very different. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> That would have actually been my question. So do you think that less talent will be needed in the future at market data and managed services? I don't think less talent. I think we're being asked as market data teams. I think market data teams have been asked to do more. So the business see data as a competitive differentiator. They want to do more with it and they rely on relying on their market data department to help them navigate licensing and sourcing and all those other things. So I don't think there will be less talent needed. I think there'll be richer talent and knowledge sets needed. If that's underpinned, if that's facilitated and enabled by technology to do more the, the um, administration and um, back office type tasks, mm -hmm. then yeah, that, that could be, I think that that's probably yeah. the next stage. Yeah, I, I agree. So if there are no more questions, thanks a lot, Thank Nina. You. It was very interesting. Thank you for coming. Thank you.